Akhenaten's Gates, Chapter 37 Ripples, yet another. The epidemic that had hit Akhenaten had never left. It still loomed in all corners of the city, snatching lives. Once more, it attacked the royal family, taking from me both of my granddaughters. I felt bitter. Meridaten felt robbed, and Akhenaten was left in a quandary. Who would marry Trudengatan to solidify his claim to the throne? There were no princesses left. Is it really so serious an issue right now? I asked. Can't you worry more about Meridaten's feelings? I do have concern for her feelings, Akhenaten insisted. They were my daughters, too. You make it sound as if I do not mourn for them. I never said that you weren't, I argued. But the topic of marriage of a boy who's obsessed with watching dragonflies for hours, picking his nose and sucking on his fingers is absurd. I want to be prepared, Akhenaten said, almost distantly. So what is it that you are suggesting, I asked. Even so, Meridaten is now my queen, and Oxen Piachin would never agree to this. Well, there's another option, Akhenaten said, scratching his cheek absently. Aksin Bayatin is my new queen, and a young girl. Aten bless her with long life. Aksin Bayatin? Are you saying that she will solidify his legitimacy? No reason why not. I stood up and stretched. I am going to Meridaten. She needs some support. Are you aware that she believes this is all her fault? Her fault? That is complete nonsense. I would suggest that you tell her so, I urged. As a mother, I can only do so much. But you are her father, and their father. She has always been your special princess. It would be nice to show her that she still is. One afternoon, after a busy morning, I retreated to my chambers and changed from King's Regalia into a simple dress. I wanted to be Nefertiti for a little while. Despite the expectation... I just could not yet maintain Smengare full time. Now free in a light dress, I wandered happily through the corridors, getting stares as though I were a ghost. It was a lovely day. Ripples came in intervals, and I was enjoying myself before the possibility of the next one. I passed through the private entrance of the great Aten Temple by way of the King's Bridge. I was curious as to what the priests were up to. Let me tell you, it was rather little. Priests knew how to be priests, but when Akhenaten was present, everything had to become a project, whether they liked it, agreed to it, or not. I assumed at first that this was no different in experience. After all, my husband was within the inner sanctum of the temple. It was a rather odd place for him to be this late in the day. It was quiet. All was calm. Over the wall, musicians were practicing, sending their notes to waft through the temple. Akhenaten was here, but it wasn't to worship. He came to listen. Listen he did as he swayed about gently like a soft breeze. He looked over his shoulder and smiled, turning around and holding out his hand. Akhenaten? Shh. It sounded so sweet with the beat, not fast. Not slow. The music was beckoning, and even I was caught up in the spell. Daintily, I took his hand, enjoying this euphoric moment. It felt like time had gone in reverse and stood still in a piece of heaven. We were like children again as he kissed me and spun me about the temple. This was heaven. It wasn't too hot or too cold, but just the perfect temperature. We felt a great deal of love and innocence welling up within us, and for those absent moments, no wrong could invade. It seemed that in the years of rage, jealousy, death, and stress, I had forgotten how to just release it all and have fun. King, queen, parents, we were human beings, and I had forgotten how to be so. Suddenly, I was so grateful to be alive, and with him. I loved him. I loved Akhenaten. I saw not his power, his riches, cared not for his influence. I saw him as my love, 
my Prince Charming, my Akhenaten once again, the innocent child that I had fallen in love with so long ago. Still, no matter how young we wanted to be, years were evident in us. Though not old, it was obvious that we had seen the passage of time. Akhenaten still looked like a pear on sticks, but had gained a bit of muscle mass. By no means was he a bodybuilder or soldier. But for a peaceful king, oh heck, let's face it, he looked like a geek. But he was my geek, and I loved him. As for myself, I had gained some weight and rolls from my years of childbirth. I looked like a saggy pear, covered in dough, on thicker sticks. I bore now some wrinkles, despite not even hitting my thirties. But Akhenaten, defying aging, still had a perfect complexion. Not a damn wrinkle. Creep. It hit his age. It was as if he was in a sort of time bubble. He was lovely, and he loved me, for me. No matter what, he thought that I was the lovely one. How I would have loved to remain like this for the rest of eternity. I wanted to be... Akhenaten and Nefertiti, eternal lovers. But, with mortals, one thing is for certain. Eternity is a concept that doesn't exist in one short lifetime.